Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about magnetic flux. This is very similar to electric flux. As a matter of fact, the equation is almost identical. I don't know if you remember this, but the equation for electric flux was E, the electric field, times A, area, times cosine theta. And I'll tell you, for magnetic flux, the only difference is that we use B, the magnetic field, instead of E, but then the rest of it is the same. The other thing I want to mention with this cosine theta, it's, it's kind of confusing. We actually want the perpendicular component, which is kind of strange because normally cosine is a parallel component. And it's technically parallel if you know the way we define directions, but I don't want to get too into the nitty gritty with that. I just want you to know that if I have, for instance, a hoop of wire like this, and think of this as in a horizontal position on the ground, and I have a magnetic field going this way through the hoop with some angle theta and the magnetic field being some variable B. I just want you to know that I want this component, the perpendicular component. I do not want the parallel component when it comes to magnetic flux. And so what that means in this example that I just made up, it would be B times cosine theta, because if you think of the right triangle that's being formed here, this is the adjacent leg. And if I wanted the opposite leg, that's when I would use sine. So in other words, yes, this would be B cosine theta. It's not always cosine theta. Sometimes it's sine theta. It depends what angle I give you. I gave us this angle. I could have given us this angle. And now everything's flipped and it uses sine. But I don't want you to worry too much about that. Just worry about getting the perpendicular component and you'll be okay. One more thing I want to say about this is that yes, this is the opposite of magnetic torque. Why? Because for magnetic torque, I wanted the B field to be parallel with the hoop in order to maximize my torque. But when it comes to flux, I want my magnetic field to go straight through it like that. So it's important to know the difference between these two topics because they are not the same. So now we're gonna do a couple examples with magnetic flux and then we'll be done. So the first problem here, imagine I have a hoop of wire like this with a magnetic field going straight through it to the left like this. I'll tell you that this shape is a rectangle with side lengths five centimeters by eight centimeters and the magnetic field B is equal to 10 Tesla. And my question is, what is gonna be the magnetic flux? So first of all, it is not zero. It is going straight through it like we want it to. So this is gonna be the maximum flux actually. And all I gotta do is B A. I can ignore the cosine theta because that's just gonna be one. It's the maximum. So B is 10, area, area of a rectangle. You'd be surprised how many of my students do not know this, but it is length times width. I gotta convert centimeters to meters. So it is really 0 0.05 times 0.08. And so whatever that ends up being, I just gotta plug this in a calculator now, and I'll get a magnetic flux of 0 0.04. And the units for this, they're very nice units, it's the Tesla meter squared. And by the way, I don't memorize these units, even though it looks like I am. I just know that flux is equal to B times A, and the units for magnetic field are Tesla, and the units for A are meter squared. So that's how I remember the units. I don't actually remember Tesla meter squared exactly. And so this is the answer and that's it. So let's do one more. A circle with diameter four meters lies in the XY plane. A magnetic field passes through it with B equals three X hat plus two Y hat. What is the magnetic flux? Oh great, X hat and Y hat, our favorite. So for this one, I think it's helpful to actually draw a picture of what's going on here. I would also say there's different ways of drawing the XY axis in three dimensions, but I'll do it this way. X direction here, Y direction up, and the Z direction pointing this way out of the page. The good news is I don't even have Z at all in this problem, so I can honestly just ignore it, but I'll just leave it there, I won't erase it. So it said the circle has diameter of four in the XY plane, that just means I draw it like this. In case you're curious, if the circle was in the YZ plane, I would try and make it look a little more vertical like that, although that doesn't look great. And if it was in the XZ plane, I would try and make it look more horizontal like that. But no, it's, it's in the XY plane, so it's 
as easy as it gets. The magnetic field is pointing 3x and 2y, which means that the magnetic field kind of looks something like this, where it has an x component of 3x hat and a y component of 2y hat. Now, if I want to find the magnetic flux, I'll skip b for a second. a, the area, is pi r squared, but I gotta divide the diameter by two because it's really radius two meters. So area is pi times two squared. Okay, fair enough. Now the real question, which component do I want? The x component or the y component? I'll give you a second to think about it. You can pause the video. And the correct answer is neither. I want the z component because that's the only component that's actually going through my circle. And since the z component is zero, that means the flux automatically is zero. So this was kind of a trick question. If there was a z component, just so you know, like let's just say it was two z hat, for instance, then you would say the flux was two times the area, which was pi times two squared. And you don't even need to worry about cosine theta because you got the right component, you got the z component. And then the answer would be whatever this is, I think it's eight pi. So that would be the flux if it was this. But yeah, that's everything I have to say. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.